Good afternoon, students, teachers, adults, and everyone joining us today. Happy National Ag Day. We are bringing you here live to Star Rock Farms to give you a virtual farm tour covering all the different areas of the farm. But before we get started, I want to let you know a few things. The first thing is, we are excited to answer your questions. You can use the Q&A feature on Zoom to submit your questions. We do our best to get to as many as we can. The next thing I want you to know is that this is all, most of this tour will be live. We do our best to make all the technology work, so be sure to be paying attention and be patient with us. Part of the tour will also be a little bit of pre-recorded section. That's to show you areas of the farm that we couldn't make it to all in the space of an hour. So it's designed to make your experience better. The last thing I want to remind you of is that we do have a worksheet associated with this tour. So make sure your eyes and your ears are paying attention because a lot of the answers to questions on that lesson plan and worksheet will be covered during the tour. Okay, now for National Ag Day, I'm going to turn it over to Farmer Ed. Farmer Ed, tell us all about the farm. Thank you. So in honor of National Ag Day, we're here at Star Rock Farms in Conestoga, Pennsylvania, which is in Lancaster County, uh, southeast part of the state. <clears throat> this is a third generation farm where we currently are milking about 1,500 cows on this location alone. Uh, we farm 983 acres, which produces all the feed for the animals on this site. So for everyone, 983 acres is 744 football fields if you were to put it all in an area. So with that being said, we're farming here uh, in Pennsylvania where we're shipping about 10 gallons of milk per cow per day which is two tractor trailer loads will leave the farm every day of the week. Uh, this milk is going to uh, fluid, which would be glasses of milk uh, here locally, and also to a butter plant, which is then uh, distributed all through the Mid-Atlantic region. So currently right now, we're standing in front of the parlor, which is where the cows are milked uh, three times a day, and it takes about an average of seven hours per milking. So throughout the 24 hours, every cow will go through the parlor three times a day. So why don't we head in there and you can see it for yourself. That is so cool, Ed. We're super excited to see all of the neat things on the farm. So we're in the milking parlor now. And now do how many times a day are your cows milked? So our cows are milked three times a day um, through this parlor. There's 20, 20 spots on a side. Um, so we're milking 40 cows at any given moment, all hours of the day. That's pretty neat. Now cows, do they like to come get milk? Do they enjoy this? So they do. As you can see while we're in here, they will file in single file line um, and get themselves in position because they enjoy coming in here uh, for this relaxing, calm, uh, peaceful time of their day. So as I see too, the cows are not being milked by hand. They're being milked by, it looks like uh, a machine. Can you explain to us a little bit about the process of each cow being milked? So each cow comes into the parlor. Um, they are cleaned and sanitized before the actual milking unit is attached to uh, each individual cow. So there's 20 cows on a side and there's 20 units. So every time a cow comes in, uh, every unit gets put on every cow after they're clean, sanitized, and prepared for this milking process. Very cool. It looks like we can clean. The cow is being sanitized. So um, what is that sanitizer? What is that that they're putting on uh, before they put the milking machines on? So it's a, it's a sanitizer dip um, called pre-dip that we're able to uh, clean and sanitize each teat on the cow. Um, so then when it's being harvested into the milking machine, uh, it is perfectly sanitized and clean. So it's basically like a pair of gloves. Every um, cow is, 
has on that's sterile and sanitized every time. Oh, very cool. So it's almost like all that hand sanitizer we've been using for the past few years. Correct. It's exactly like hand sanitizer for every, every cow. Okay, Farmer Ed, how long does it take each cow to be milked completely? So currently right now it takes about six and a half minutes per cow uh, to be milked every time. Uh, as you can see, this cow in the second in the first stall is uh, made about 33 pounds uh, this one milking. So she does that three times. That's right around 10 gallons uh, that she's making every time she's in the parlor throughout the day. Very cool. So, Ed, another question is, it looks like you have some help here helping you out. How many employees work here on the farm? So in total, there are 20 uh, employees on the dairy that are in charge of uh, the milking and also the feeding and the health of the herd every day. Um, so it takes about 20 people total to do all the tasks throughout the 24 hour period, seven days a week. Okay, Ed, we did have a question come in about your cows and that was how old are these cows and how old is the oldest cow on the farm? So this group of cows right here uh, would be about four to six years old. Uh, these are the older cows on the farm. Um, and our oldest cow right now is 11 years old. That's still, still going through the parlor three times a day. 11 years old, that's pretty impressive for a cow. How long do cows usually live? So on average, our cows right now are um, about six and a half to seven years old is the average, majority of them being the youngest because um, there's always having young, young animals in coming into, uh, into the milking string. Uh, and some of the older animals are slowing down on their production. Um, and not making as much milk as a uh, young cow is as they're coming into the herd. So right now, that's about where we're at. Okay, so you talked about how each cow, it gets recorded how much milk they make. I, that must take some technology, Ed. So what types of technology do you use to make that happen or record that information? So when uh, the other camera was up in front of the cows, you would see that every cow has a collar like this. Um, basically, it's a Fitbit for the cows. This uh, recording device records the animal's activity and also how much milk they're making, how much time they're laying, how much time they're eating, how much time they're walking from the pen to the parlor, and how total active they are throughout the day. So basically, if you think about this, this is a Fitbit for cows. Um, and then that's how each unit here in the parlor knows how much milk each cow is making every time she comes through the parlor. That's awesome. It looks like our second camera is showing how those collars fit right on the cow's neck. It's almost kind of like a cool necklace. Yeah, so each, each cow gets a necklace like this that um, she wears her whole time she's up here uh, and is able to tell us all the information about the cow and recorded uh, as data that we're able to use as uh, the managers on the farm. Oh, so that's how you keep track of all their health records. That makes sense, right? So, so that includes probably, I'm sure these cows, do they ever see like a veter veterinarian or, or a cow doctor? Or do you guys take care of them all the time? So we we're trained and take care of um, as much as we possibly can, but we're not professionals. So we, uh, have to bring in some outside help at different times, uh, which is a trained veterinarian, uh, which is uh, comes on the farm when we need help here uh, to take care of a sick cow or a cow that's just having a little bit of a problem that we can't figure out ourselves. Okay, Ed, we had another question come in. What types or breeds of cows do you have and what types or breeds of cows are we looking at? So here right now in this group of cows, uh, these are all Holsteins, um, black and white cows. There is a few red and white Holsteins in the herd, but so these are, these are Holsteins. Uh, we also have jerseys on the farm. 
uh, as well. So we have two breeds here of the seven major dairy breeds here at Star Rock Farms. Very cool. So is there any difference between the two or why you would have one or the other? So the Holsteins are uh, going to produce the most volume of milk uh, when the Jerseys are going to produce the highest butter fat and protein in the milk. So we have a blend of the two, which makes the perfect blend uh, of total milk uh, that we ship out the door every day in those two trailer loads. That's pretty awesome. So I know, Ed, you had said you're making about 10 gallons of milk a day and that that's going off to make primarily fluid milk or the milk we drink as well as butter. Um, but I also wanted to ask, where does all that milk get stored and how do you keep it cool? So all the milk gets stored in big, in big storage tanks that um, are cooled throughout as the milk is getting put into them. And then it is shipped off the farm once it leaves, um, once it leaves here. So you, the second cam might go over there, but where it is is right next door to where we currently are uh, here in the milking parlor. Okay, so the cows get milk. You guys store the milk till it's ready to leave on the tractor trailer load where then it gets processed and made into our favorite delicious dairy products. That's how it works, right, Ed? That is correct. That seems pretty, that seems pretty cool. So I have another question, though. I mean, we're obviously, we're, washing, we're, we're watching in the background some washing of the parlor um, and some rinsing down. So, and then I'm assuming your cows drink water and that you use water here on the farm. Can you tell us how much does each cow drink for water? And then also, how do you guys use water responsibly? So all the water uh, on the farm is used uh, in multiple fashions. Number one fashion is to cool the milk, which then is reused uh, and recycled for the cows to then drink. So cows are drinking about uh, 50 gallons of water a day for them to produce all this milk at the highest quality. So our water goes through the cooling system and then used again for the cows to drink uh, out in the barns. Also, we're using that same water that is extra for when we have the sprinklers on in the summer to keep the cows cool. So we're trying to use every gallon of water on the farm possible for as many different applications uh, total here on the farm that's so cool so you're definitely recycling your water and being sustainable in that way i think that's pretty neat now i know i can imagine to make all the milk that you guys are making that your cows are making you probably have to feed them a pretty healthy diet right that is correct so maybe for our next stop we should go and check out uh, after we see a quick video here some of the equipment you use to grow the, the crops that feed your cows. What do you think? That Ed? sounds we do good that? to me. All right. So let's check out a quick video of uh, an overview of the farm to see where some of the crops are produced before we show you the equipment that gets it all done. This is a aerial video uh, of our farm where we are currently standing to give you guys some perspective of how big in size our facility is where we house all the cows. In the group background, uh, you can see the corn that is planted. Uh, currently, it's not planted, but we'll show you what piece of equipment does plant the corn here in the spring, as that's a task that's done every year here coming up in the next few weeks. We farm about 1,000 acres, which feed all of these cows that you will see throughout this today on this tour. As you can see, our farm is located right next to a large uh, body of water, the Susquehanna River. So water quality is of most uh, importance for us where we keep buffer areas from the main air, main cow area down to their stream to protect the highest quality water. Okay, Ed, it looks like we've made it outside. So tell us a little bit about what piece of equipment we're standing by and how this piece of equipment will uh, help you guys with all those crops we just saw in the aerial overview. Yeah, so this piece of equipment we're by right now is a tractor and corn planter which will be the first piece of equipment we use in the spring 
to plant the crops that we'll harvest uh, later this year. So in that video, you saw the fields were all green. Well, that was planted last October and we'll be harvesting it here in the next month or so, which is cereal rye, which is uh, the first crop we will harvest. Uh, and then we will plant corn in uh, to produce all those tons of feed, which is about 2,500 school buses worth of feed, if you look at it that way, to feed all these cows here on the farm. Wait a minute. So you mean to tell me these cows are going to eat 2,500 school buses, basically the equivalent weight of school buses in just the feed that you grow here on the farm? That is correct. So that takes all those school buses of weight, essentially, to feed all these cows here on the farm uh, that are producing those 10 gallons of milk a day. And Ed, that piece of equipment you're standing uh, that's behind you looks gigantic. Can you stand next to a tire for us? How big is that piece of equipment? So you can see that this tractor's tire alone is the size that I am tall. So it is a very large piece of equipment that it takes to do all the jobs here on the farm to plant and harvest all the crops. Oh my gosh. And now that also looks like a pretty fancy piece of equipment. Do you use some technology to help you get it all done? Yeah. So all the equipment here on the farm is equipped with GPS uh, tracking and also steering uh, to make the rows as perfectly straight as possible and be as efficient as possible as we as we traverse over the fields. Uh, so we're not over doubling rows and trying to make sure that every time we go through the field, we're being as efficient and conservative as possible to grow all those crops here. Wow, that's pretty neat. Now, I know you talked about a couple different types of crops, but what are the maybe the primary three crops you grow to feed your cows? So the three major crops we would grow would be small grain silage, which is cereal rye, corn. Now corn would be corn silage and corn grain. Uh, so two different types of corn. And then hay would be our other three major crops that we would grow to put together the feed for these cows. That's pretty cool. So now, Ed, maybe do you want to show us the piece of equipment that harvests all those crops you're about to put plant in the ground? So the next piece of equipment that's over on this side is a combine, which would be used to harvest the corn, grain, the soybeans, and wheat, which all are components of feed for our cows. Now, we don't necessarily feed soybeans, but we feed soybean meal. So we, we combine the soybeans and then we process it down further to be an ingredient in our, in our cow feed here at the farm. Okay, so now, Ed, we have a question, and I think it relates to crops, and it's, what happens to all of the cow poop? Where does it all go? If you have, you told us, how many cows do you have here again? 1,500 cows here. 1,500, okay, 1,500 cows and all of that poop from 1,500 cows, where does it all go? So it's currently stored in storage containers here on the farm, large ponds of, of poop that will then be used as nutrients for fertilizer in the spring and fall, uh, which is then used, the, the crops that grow use all that poop as nutrients uh, to grow high volume and high quality which then in the fall and spring get harvested uh, to make this fermented feed for the cows. Well, that's awesome. So you're using cow poop as a recyclable material to help fertilize your crops. That sounds awesome. Yep. What so a good way to use it. Oh, I love it. Okay. And we had another question come in. This also looks like a really big piece of equipment, but what it also looks like is pretty darn expensive. So I know, you know, we think about maybe cars on the road. How much would this piece of equipment cost? The same as a car on the road? So this, the, the combine here would, not, would be about uh, 18 minivans. If you were to equate it to minivans, 
and the tractor would be about 10 minivans. So if you're out harvesting, harvesting corn, it would t it line up 18 minivans would be the same price as one of these combines brand new. So it's, it's not the same price of a car. It takes multiple cars to pay for one of these pieces of equipment. Wow, that is pretty darn cool. So, so, Ed, I think we've seen the cows being milked, and now we've seen the equipment that it takes to get the crops in every year. But I think we want to see some footage of the cows in the barn and maybe learn about another cool way that you feed your cows. What do you think? Should we check that out? It sounds good. All right, let's check that out. You're seeing uh, an interior glimpse of the cow uh, facility where the cows spend all their day eating, sleeping, resting, chewing their food. Uh, cows spend about 10 hours a day chewing their food and eating, so it's a huge portion of their day. Also, you can see some uh, very extremely comfortable stalls for the cows to lay in where their beds are made every day, laying on cool, dry sand. It's like playing at the beach every day. Also, our stalls are flexible in size uh, differential for each animal that can go smaller or bigger, depending on the size of the cow. So then she has the most comfortable bed every day. As you can see, the cows are laying down, chewing their cud, enjoying life as they're laying on the cool, dry sand. Cows spend about 10 hours a day chewing their, co their cud and eating. So you can see that the importance of a comfortable, dry bed for them to relax and lay in. Also, you can see we have cow, cow back scratchers, the personal massager of cows um, to keep cows clean and, rejoy, or, and enjoy their day as they're getting their back scratched just like everyone else does. As you're seeing on the screen, just to give you some perspective of the size and scale uh, of the housing that the cows live in. Wow, Ed, that's all really cool. Look at how comfortable those cows look between fans and sprinklers to keep them cool in the summertime. That's pretty awesome. But I see these cows have a lot of food to eat in front of them. Can you share a little bit about how you feed your cows and maybe some of the cool ways that you feed them? So our cow diets are balanced properly and accurately, just like your school lunches are, which makes the best meal possible for everyone to enjoy and consume. So one thing we do at Star Rock Farms from a sustainability standpoint is uh, we feed a food waste product, which is liquid ice cream before it's frozen. As you can see, it's 42 degrees pre-frozen ice cream waste from Turkey Hill. So what would happen to this ice cream if you guys didn't feed it to your cows? be disposed of uh, through a digester, an anaerobic digester on another dairy farm. Instead, we've uh, decided to feed it to cows. Okay, Ed, so what nutrients do cows get from ice cream? How does this fuel their day? It provides them with a fat source, a sugar source, um, and then a little, a little energy and a little protein, but it also is a liquid, so it keeps the feed all stuck together, which is, makes the total mix ration, which is the TMR, uh, to bind that product together so then every mouthful that the cow eats is perfectly balanced um, and she's not sorting through small particles, particles to big particles. It's all the same throughout. Okay, so you basically take all the food your cows need and you put it in a big giant blender and mix it up together to make sure that they eat their vegetables. So they're getting like a smoothie or like a tossed salad would be the closest thing we would eat to what cows get to eat every day. So Ed, cows are amazing recyclers, making sure that they use up food that we wouldn't otherwise use. How much does this actually save you guys on the farm by feeding ice cream? So by feeding this product, um, which is a waste product, we're able to save about two and a two and a half pounds of purchase feed a day per cow. Uh, so on 1,500 cows, it's a very big number that we're not purchasing in. We're reusing from a sustainability standpoint uh, of not disposing it. Uh, there's two loads a day. So these cows are gonna consume uh, two tons of ice cream in their diet 
uh, not a piece, but across the board for this uh, 250 cow group. So it's about um, it's uh, about eight dry matter pounds per cow, or it's about 12, 12 pounds per cow per day of ice cream. That's so cool, Ed. I see the feed being delivered on the camera screen now. Looks like those cows are pretty content. I think you're going to show us some of those feed ingredients when we hop back live. So let's go back to the live. Ed, we got you back. So now you're going to show us, uh, we just saw how you feed ice cream to cows. How cool is that? How did you guys figure out that feeding ice cream to cows was a good idea. So we get all of our ice cream from Turkey Hill, which is only a mile and a half here from the dairy. Uh, and just from the local community, we saw it was a, a concern that they had to get rid of this ice cream waste. And we decided we might as well feed it to cows and uh, use it in a uh, sustainable fashion to help offset our costs and also get rid of a problem uh, from Turkey Hill. Very cool. So you guys definitely, as a farm, you're cooperating with the local community to help recycle and not waste food products. That is just too awesome. But we saw the feed all mixed up and delivered. Now I'm hoping you can show us each of the components. How about that? So yeah, if you, if you look here, we have some hay that we start with. And then we add some straw chopped straw and then we add our protein mix which is uh soybean meal all the minerals and vitamins um all the goodies the candy let's say of the of the corn or of the food and then we add ground corn um which would be whole corn kernels added uh ground up and then added to the mix and then we have fermented small grain silage which would have been harvested last may so 2021 it's been fertilized or fermented and then we add it to the mix and then we have corn silage uh which would have been from fall of 2021 so last year's corn that's been in the bunk and fermented and then bam we put it all together we mix it up and then that's what the cows eat all day long at their gourmet buffet buffet all day Oh my gosh, that's pretty cool. So you mean to tell me cows get a perfectly balanced plate to eat from all day. Now, how many pounds of feed is each cow eating a day? So each cow would eat approximately 150 to 170 pounds of that mix all day long. And they have free choice access of fresh feed all day, 24 hours a day of a perfectly balanced diet. You are correct. Wow, that is a lot of food, but it sounds pretty delicious. I wish I had a gourmet buffet and a personal chef like you guys do now. I know you guys aren't cooking any of this food, but do you have someone like a professional who helps you figure out what exactly to feed your cows to keep them healthy? Yeah, so we have a professional nutritionist that uh, balances the diet every day that we need them to um, is, is constantly sampling the ingredients to make sure we know exactly what's going into the food uh, that the cows get to eat all day long. So it's a perfect, perfect balance, perfect diet all day, every day. That's awesome. So Ed, we've had a lot of other questions come in about cows and I know our second camera is still checking out some of your cows. Think you could answer a few of them for us? Absolutely. Okay, so we have the question of, do you name each cow? Does each cow get a name? So each cow doesn't get a name per se, but every cow has an ID form um, as an ear tag in their ear. So we can keep track of every animal from when they're born to when they enter the milking string uh, to even when they go dry. So then we can keep track of records and also how much milk each cow is making and then when we pair that up with their collars, we can per, uh, precisely and accurately manage all the animals from a newborn calf 
to the old mature cow. Got it. So they did ask, our students did ask us again too, at what age will a cow actually start producing milk and what makes them start producing milk? So cows will start producing milk once they have their first calf and they will do that about two years of age, two, two and a half years of age uh, when they have their first calf and they enter the milking string uh, for the first time. Okay, another question that's come in is, do you have all girl cows here on the farm or are there any boy cows here on the farm? So at this facility, we have only girl cows because they are the ones that are producing the milk, um, which is then shipped off on the farm to get to put into the milk and also the butter. So on this site, we only have girl cows here at the barn. Got it. That makes sense. We had another question come in, which is, are every cow's spots different? Could two cows have the same spots? So no two cows can have the same spots. It's just like snowflakes. Every single cow is a perfect individual that is different from the next, not only from their personality, but also from their spots on, uh, on their body. So cows actually have personalities? Do they, do they make friends or do they uh, enjoy being with other cows? Are they uh, group animals? Oh, cows are most certainly group animals. They love being with their friends out in the barn. Uh, you'll constantly see the same couple cows come into the parlor through every group. Um, they're very herd-like animals. And yes, they most certainly have their own personalities especially the brown jerseys that uh, you probably did see in the video. They have most uh, wonderful personality. Got it. Now, we did have another question come in about, you know, we saw on the video some of those brushes, and now we're seeing on the cow camera, the cows keep themselves very clean. Do they get baths ever? So cows don't get baths ever here. The only time they would get a bath is when it gets really hot out, we have a sprinkler system uh, to keep the cows cool, which does clean them. But when those cows are laying on that cool, dry sand, um, that keeps their bedding nice and dry and clean. And that keeps the animal clean as well. So between the back scratchers and the clean bedding, our cows do stay extremely clean. Okay, we have a last couple of questions about the milking parlor before we head to our next spot, which was, what does the machine actually feel like? It doesn't hurt, does it? So the actual milking machine does not hurt the cow at all. They actually enjoy it. And basically, if you were to take your hand and basically make it into a fist and stick your other finger into it and just squeeze your hand on your other finger, it's basically all it feels like is a squeeze of your hand to, um, to that finger is basically what that machine's doing to the cow. Okay, the last question we had was, we saw when on some of the milking prep that uh, the sanitizer that you're using on your cows, it's not clear like our sanitizer, it's actually colored. Why is it colored kind of the color rust red? So the color is to make sure we know that the, the teat is perfectly covered. Um, so we get a perfect cover of sanitizer on each teat when we are cleaning it, which then if it was clear, we'd have a hard time being able to know if that teat was done and also high, how much of a good job they did on each teat. So this way it's colored. So then we can know exactly that they're doing the highest quality job uh, in the parlor during their milking routine. Got it. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. So now we've seen so many different parts of the farm. And I think we only have one part left to see, which might be the cutest part of all. So I know you said every cow has to have a calf in order to produce milk. Do you, do you think you could show us? Cause I know you raised some calves here, Ed, can you show us some calves and maybe how you take care of them? So here we built this pen out here uh, so everyone can see it today. 
Um, but here's a two examples of two new calves that were just recently born here at the farm. One Jersey and one Holstein. Uh, Cause I did say we do milk Holsteins and Jersey's here at the farm. So every calf is fed uh, a bottle like this twice a day, um, which gives them uh, whole milk, which is nutritious for them to grow and also is what they need to eat because they can't truly eat everything like a mature cow can. So we have to start feeding them milk as a new calf here on the farm. That makes sense, Ed. So you said these calves were just born today? So this little Jersey was born late this or early this morning and that Holstein was born late last night. So yeah, they both are both are less than 24 hours old here on the farm. Oh my gosh. They look really big, Ed. How big is are each of those calves? How much do they weigh? So each of these the little Jersey's uh less than the Holstein, but the Holstein would probably be about 100 pounds. Um, and this jersey would be about 80 pounds. Okay, so you've had two born within a pretty close time period. How many are born here on the farm every day? Uh, on average, we have about six to eight born every day here on the farm. Uh, every day, every week, all year long. So it's about, it's, uh, it comes out to be about 2,000 animals uh, born every day or in the course of a year. Wow, that's a lot of animals to take care of. And now I know you said that you don't keep boy cows here on the farm, but I'm sure you have some boy cow calves born. So can you explain what happens with them on the farm? So the, the boy calves that are born here on the farm do get raised uh, at a different location where they're purposed different than producing milk. Um, and from our standpoint of producing milk at this site, we can only keep the girls here. So that's why, oops, all the boys go to another location, not here at the farm. Walking is hard when you're just new at it. I mean, that makes I, a lot of sense to me. That's right, especially when you're less than a, a day old. So another question, Ed, is how much will each of these calves grow every single day? You said that they're being fed milk. So are they are they growing a, like a pound a day, two pounds a day? Uh, so, yeah, they're they should be uh, gaining about two, two to three pounds a day, uh, which they will basically double their birth weight in two months. So if they start at 100 pounds, they'll be 200 pounds in two months. So they should be over two pounds a day every day. Okay. And how much milk are you feeding each of them every day? I think it would probably take a lot of milk to gain two pounds a day. So each calf is getting uh, two, two quart bottles um, fed every day. So they're getting over a gallon of milk every day while they're on milk for those 60 days. Oh my gosh. Could you imagine drinking over a gallon of milk every day? That's a lot of milk. Yes, it is. Okay. We had another question come in, which was asking about the ear tags on each calf. Can you tell us a little bit about that information? So yeah, that ear tag is specific to each individual animal on the farm. So there, as soon as they are born and fed for their first time, they get that ear tag, which will always be with them. It's their source of identification. It's like your driver's license. It's their source of identification that we will always be able to know that this calf right here is 6986. Um, so then we can keep track of her throughout her whole life while she's here on the farm. Got it. That makes a lot of sense. And it looks like the Jersey is so new. She hasn't even gotten her ear tag yet. Is that right? That is correct. She has not gotten her ear tag yet. 
So Ed, the other question we had come in is these calves um, obviously were born really recently, but they aren't actually with the uh, cow that they came from. Can you explain why we bring our calves to a separate facility to be raised? So we bring the calves to a separate facility um, from an animal safety standpoint. So this, this new calf is only less than 100 pounds, but the, the mature cow is over uh, 10 times her weight when she's born. So in order from a safety standpoint, we have to take the, cal the calves down to the calf farm and the cows go to the cow barn. So then they can stay with animals the same size as each other and be in the same group as each as the same size group. Okay, but the calves still get to be with each other, though, right? They still get some socialization because we talked about how they're herd animals. Correct. So they get to stay with their buddies that are all born at the same time uh, and hang out in the same pens together throughout. Got it. That makes a lot of sense. So, Ed... I noticed too that the calves are laying on uh, what looks like a fluffy kind of bedding. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Is that what all of the calves lay on? So all the calves lay on this dry straw, um, which is beautifully light and fluffy as you can see. And it's always dry for them. So it's, uh, they can never get wet and cool. And then they're able to nuzzle down in like you see and make a little nest so they stay nice and warm. Uh, when the temperature does change, like it sometimes will here in Pennsylvania. That's another question that's come in, Ed. What temperature do cows even like? Do they like it warm or cool? Cows don't like the extreme cold or the extreme heat. They like nice, beautiful 65 degrees all day long would be perfect, ideal cow temperature. So when it does get cold, we have to close the barns up or put jackets on the the little animals uh and then when it does get hot we do turn the fans and sprinklers on like i talked about earlier to try to keep them as cool and calm as possible uh all year long so we've had a lot of students asking us does it hurt when they get their ear tags in or, or is it kind of like getting your ears pierced maybe it's the exact same as getting your ears pierced it might hurt for a second, but after that, that's just part of part of their ears. Got it. That makes a lot of sense. Now we have had a couple other questions come in here. Are there ever any twins born on the farm? There is lots, not as much as you would think, but there's always sets of twins born uh, on the farm here. Uh, then it can be a boy and a boy or a girl and a girl or a boy and a girl. So it's the same, same principle that we uh, have as a single as we can have as a double as set of twins. Triplets are a lot more rare, but twins are common. It looks like we have some students joining too who have maybe been on a farm before and we're asking if your calves in the winter, if they get jackets. Yeah, so when it does get cold and in the winter, our, our calves do get jackets uh, that they keep on till they outgrow them. And at the point of when they outgrow them, they are mature enough that they can produce enough body heat to stay warm if it was to get very cold for them. Got it. Okay, that's pretty cool. That must be a lot of laundry when you have to wash all those jackets after they're done wearing them for the year. It is a lot of work to make all those jackets get clean for the next batch. Okay. Someone else has asked, we've seen that the cows live in the barns, but did the cows ever go outside of the barns or escape? The only time the cows get out of the barn is when they do escape. All the rest of the time they stay inside the barn because uh, we know they're safe and cool and um in the best in the best locations when they're in that barn laying on that sand that sand bedded stall and not out roaming the back country uh, where they could be harmed or endangered so we try to keep them inside the barn at all times to keep them cool, to keep them safe from the environments 
that makes a lot of sense. And we, when we talked about what temperature cows prefer, I think being in the barns, you guys can control that and give them the most comfortable temperature that they like to be at, right? And that is exactly right. Okay, Ed, we've got a couple more questions here coming in from students. That was, do you guys have any other animals here on the farm or is it just cows and calves? So here on this location, we only have cows and calves. Um, on our on another location, we have beef cattle, and then on another location after that, we have pigs. But here on this farm alone is just cows and calves. Got it. So another question that has just come in is: Do the cows need exercise? I know we talked about, we don't really want them to escape, but I think they still get some uh, exercise and movement, right? Those pedometers track something. Right. So cows are free range inside the barn. Um, they're able to go inside their pen uh, as much as they want, wherever they want. So they get as much exercise as they need every day going inside the pen. And also uh, when they go from the pen to the parlor, three times a day. So they get plenty of exercise throughout. Got it. That makes a lot of sense. Another question we had come in was, do you have to train your cows? So, so our cows, uh, are trained, they, they do this process three times a day when they go from the pen to the parlor and then from the parlor back. So every day they're doing this three times a day and they do get it figured out very quickly. And especially when they're in the parlor for the first time, it takes a couple of times to get them through the parlor. And then they do realize that it's a, a nice environment that they get trained to do. And it never has to be any much work after that. Got Got it. So, a lot of different areas of the farm, the parlor, to seeing all the crops that you guys grow, to see where they live, and farm. So, Ed, for National Ag Day, do you want to share with all of our... So, I think, uh, uh, I think that everyone uh, gets to see uh, the day in the life of Farmer Ed today uh, for National Ag Day. So, that's pretty cool and gives you guys a little bit of an insight of what it takes to produce all this milk. Uh, that you guys are able to consume, whether it be fluid milk, whether it be ice cream, whether it be yogurt or butter, um, all the work that it takes to go into it is uh, it's pretty, pretty cool and exciting for you guys to see. Awesome. Well, we really appreciate all of your time today, Ed, and we wish you a happy National Ag Day. And thank you so much for showing us the farm. Now, I just want to remind everybody, we have a couple more tours coming up. You can still tour another farm live. You have two more chances in April and in May. Make sure to go to AmericanDairy.com to register for the next tour. If you joined us late and want to see some more information too, this tour is already available on YouTube. So you can catch the replay as well. But until then, happy National Ag Day, and thank you, Farmer Ed, for taking us on our tour today. We'll see everybody later.